or more. He falls back to 11th. That same situation. Here we come. White flag for Ricky Rudd. One more lap to go. Around the two and a half mile oval and more contact back here as Kyle Petty and Jeremy Mayfield make contact with each other. Look at this race as they head for the corner. There's the lead. Bobby Labonte chasing Ricky Rudd off the second corner. They're on to the backstretch for the final time in this year's Brickyard 400. Rudd with about a five or six car length advantage on Bobby Labonte. They head for turn number three for the final time. Rudd is through there safely onto the short shoot. Into turn number four and now onto the straightaway. Labonte makes a final run at him. He closes in. Will he make a move? He cannot do it. Ricky Rudd wins the fourth Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis. There is major celebration going on in the pit area, and Ernie Irvin comes out with some body damage after that scramble down to the line. He finished in 10th position. So we will be back here at the Brickyard to talk with the winner of this year's Brickyard 400, Ricky Rudd. We'll be back in just a moment to do that. Pulling into victory lane right now is the young man from Chesapeake, Virginia. He gives Ford his 12th win of the year. Getting the congratulations of his wife, Linda. This is a young man that first made his racing mark in go-karts back in Chesapeake, Virginia. His first Winston Cup ride, he borrowed it from a friend of his from Chesapeake, Virginia. His brother and he argued over who would be the driver, who would be the crew chief, and now Ricky Rudd has come to the Brickyard 400, Victory Lane, and guess what, guys? He ran out of gas trying to get to Victory Lane. Ricky Rudd, you told the crew you're the big dog today. Well, I tell you, these guys did a great job. We were fourth, third, fourth place car today, and uh, they kept digging. In practice the other day, we were a last place car, and they didn't give up. They kept working on this time for full forward, and they got us pretty racing in the pit strategy and a few miles with uh, George Gable and uh, all the guys over there at, at Pro Motor did a great job today. It's just, just uh, unbelievable here. Gary Myers did the tuning on the motor, so I don't know what to say. This is just a shock to me. Ricky, with about 20 or 30 laps to go, you began to back off the throttle just a little bit. Some people may have counted you out of the race, but you had begun to conserve fuel. Well, we knew this was going to be really tight, really tight. We were going to go for it. We were going to roll the dice. We were going to win it, and we were going to finish last. And, uh, uh, you know, these guys kept telling me, back off a little bit. If you don't back off, you're not going to make it. And then the cost was played right in our hand. Well, this is the time for the big payday, but it's also the time to receive the commemorative PPG brick, and your name will go on the PPG trophy. To make the presentation is the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Tony George. First of all, congratulations. You guys called a great race. Uh, on behalf of PPG, I'd like to present this with you on the 1997 uh, winning of the Brickyard 400. Thanks very much, Tony. It's just a... Uh... It was a boyhood dream to be able to race here at Indianapolis and let alone race, but come here and win this thing uh, in, in the stock cars is unbelievable. I took a tour around here when I was 12 years old. We were racing go-karts down the street. Never thought we'd be racing here. It's unbelievable. When will it sink in? When will you and your wife get really emotional about this victory? Man, I don't know. I, I, I took my helmet off, took the window net down on the cool-down lap, and just got a chance to think about it. I'd like to say hello to my dad back home. I know he's watching. 